All right, let's go out to Jacksonville, Florida, and talk to Joe. Hey, Joe, what's up, man? Hey, Dr. John, how are you? Partying, man. What are you up to? Oh, uh, well, uh, just trying to party myself. <laughs> Excellent. What's up, man? Oh, not much. Um, so I wrote into the show, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was I started uh, basically at the beginning of the year. I started therapy, and we, uh, you know, a couple months now, uh, kind of dug in and found out I have some codependent habits. And one of the things that my therapist wanted me to do was to build a set of personal values. And I started trying to find some personal values. I pulled, um, you know, some values from the army values when I was in the army. Um, you know, I pulled some from you, Dr. Jordan Peterson, stuff like that. But I still find myself, um, some of my values that I think I try to find are based on the opinions of others instead of like a close personal core value. Dude. Why do you think so little of Joe of yourself? Um, like this stems well, like the codependency, all this stems from a place where Joe does not feel like Joe's worth a crap. Where does that come from, man? Um, I think, I think it kind of comes from trying to take care of everyone else. And, uh, you know, sometimes it feels like I leave myself out to dry. You always do. You always have. Why? Uh, I think that it's, um, you know, as a kid, it was, um, you know, part of it was, oh, hey, you know, your, your dad's on a tear, just whatever you do, just don't set him off or, and I think I kind of learned that habit of, okay, if I just go with the flow, don't, you know, make too much of a ruckus, um, you know, I can just kind of coast on through. So I want to, I want to pause right there. And this is for, I, you've lived this, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, but I want everyone listening because I say this sometimes, uh, but I don't say it enough. One of the most damaging things we can do to a child is to put that weight on them that was placed on you, Joe. Don't say this or dad's going to get really mad. You know if you do that or your grades aren't this, then mom's going to fill in the blank. And that encodes in a child's nervous system that it is their job to be the adult in every room they walk into. Because the adults in the room are dependent on children for whether they lose their temper or they get angry or they get mad or they smash something or hit somebody or have to drink or swear, whatever the thing is. And that is not a kid's job ever. It's the adult's, it's the adult's responsibility, right? So I'll tell you, Joe. I'll be waiting for that. Okay. I'll tell you, Joe, that was never your job. Yeah, that's something I, you know, reflecting on it and, you know, talking with my therapist, like, and hearing what you said in past episodes and whatnot, I do realize that it's, it was never my job to, as a kid, to take care of the feelings of adults. Um, but here we are, right? And you need to make personal values and you don't even have a roadmap. Right. So, so let's back out and I want you to talk to Joe in the third person. Like you're one of those weird pro wrestlers. Okay. All right. Tell me what your friend Joe values. Um, say those words like my buddy, Joe Values what? Um, that's a that's a tough one. Um, I don't think so. Think, let's start with the easy stuff, like things like honesty and things like showing up on time and things like comedy or things like um, clearly you have amazing taste in podcast, right? Because you listen to this. I'm just kidding. Of course. Um, but what are some things that your buddy Joe values? Uh, my buddy Joe values telling the truth, uh, 
you know, personal courage, uh, being passionate about something, uh, being self-motivated. Why aren't those good enough to be your values? Um, well, I think one of the things, uh, my wife had a, a weekend away with her, with some of her friends and I had all these great plans. I was going to, I was going to, you know, do these house projects. I was going to go to the gym. I was going to do all this stuff. And I ended up just sitting around doing nothing, eating bad food and ended up what I felt kind of like wasting the, wasting the the weekend away and looking back on, I'm like, man, like, what are you doing? Like, you, you didn't do what you said you would do and kind of made me look back in life of all the times I was kind of left to my own devices, if you will. And, you know, without that external motivation or, um, you know, an external motivation, I just, I'm not very productive or, you know, and it made me kind of think I lost trust in myself a little bit because I thought I'd made these big gains. And then I was like, Oh, here's a great opportunity for me to really prove to myself and basically blew it. Except that every weekend is not the Super Bowl, And there could have been a weekend. You just need to rest. That's true. Could have been a weekend that you and your wife have kind of been picking at each other and kind of this and then that and then that and then this and then it was like, eh. and then she left and your whole body went, ah, oh. that doesn't mean your marriage is falling apart. That doesn't mean you're a person that lacks integrity and a person that lies to himself. That means you're a person who's exhausted and you kind of, you kind of, you kind of wimped out on a weekend. All right. I love yeah. the old Irvin Yalom quote. He's a he's one of the godfathers of modern therapy. And he says, everything is data. And the reason I like the idea that everything is data, because you can do two things with what happened this, this weekend that you're thinking about. You can look in the mirror and say, you freaking loser. You've always been like this. You're such a coward. You're such an idiot. You can go down that road. And you start a biochemical cascade that's going to wind you up into a tiny little ball. You're going to be in a fetal position emotionally. And then when you get in that position, like a child, you start looking for the adults in the room for what, where should I go? What should I do? And that's been the pattern of your whole life. Or everything's data. Man, when my wife leaves town, I go kaput. I want to be energized when she leaves town. What would that look like? What would need to be true there? One of those is judgmental. One of those is curious. When I was first started practicing jujitsu years and years ago, I would get so enraged when I would get tapped out. It would make me so mad. And instantly, I would go to, see, you've always been a wimp. You're always going to be a wimp. You're always going to, right? I just, it was this judgment. And the thing that drew me deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole in the jujitsu community was curiosity. How did you do that? Wow. You turned my whole weight over on, it was just a, a complete reorientation of how I approached the world. But somewhere along the way, you picked up a story that Joe sucks. And you go looking f to validate that story everywhere. And as the great Brene Brown says, whatever you go looking for in the world, you are sure to find. Instead of being curious. Now, is there time to be disappointed in yourself? Yeah, of course. I've had those exact weekends you're talking about. I have a book due on month, a chapter due on Monday. It's Friday. My family leaves. And dude, I just do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's so frustrating <laughs> yeah. and it's so maddening. But here's what I've learned to do. I go real hard. And as a, you, are you still in the military? Are you out? No, I've been out for several years. Okay. What do you do for a living? Um, I drive the big brown truck around, uh, UPS driver. All right. So here's what I know about you. You follow systems really well. You work really hard. 
all day, every day, and you have for a long, long time. Fair? True or false? Oh, definitely true. True. So you're not a weakling, and you're not a coward, and you're not avoidant of hard work. And for guys no, hard like... Hard work is one of the... Go oh, ahead. Sorry. Hard work say, is... You know, the, the, the val- one of the values of hard work, and, um, you know, that's one of the things I do like about myself is I am a hard worker. Okay. One of the cornerstones of making hard work possible is rest. And so when you have a bunch of plans and your body says, yeah, we're not doing that. Instead of instantly going towards the great story that Joe's the worst. I want you to begin to practice curiosity. Why is my body so wiped out? Why? Oh, because I run UPS. I've been running extra shifts, and me and my wife have been back and forth on each other. She's gone. My body finally goes, whew, let's rest. Man, I want to get a bunch of stuff done. All right, we'll get it done. You see the difference? Oh, definitely. This is not a switch that you can flip overnight. But the, uh, the orientation towards being curious about why your body's doing what it's doing and why you're struggling. And why you want to get these things done, but you only got a few of them done. It just takes time. And you have to decide, I want to practice this. The same as you had to practice your routes when you first got into UPS. Same as when you had to practice your drills when you first got, went to the military. It's just something you're going to practice. But my guess is over time, what you're going to do is you're going to get that drill sergeant voice out of your head. And you're going to get a much more compassionate voice in your mind. And you're going to actually solve some problems instead of looking to people to tell you what to do next. You see the difference? Yes. And that is one of the things that's like intellectually, I know all these things. I've listened to enough podcasts. I've read books. I've watched tons of YouTube video, all this kind of stuff on. I feel like I got, you know, that head knowledge, but converting that into heart knowledge and action, that's one of the toughest things. Sometimes it's as simple as when you start berating yourself, you yell out loud privately in your home, stop. Sometimes it's as simple as talking to yourself in the third person. Ethan Cross has a great book called Chatter about that. When we say words like I, I'm stupid, I'm an idiot, I screwed up, our bodies have a chemical response. When we say things like, man, Joe, you messed that up. Joe, you slept in all weekend. It creates space. It creates a psychological space that has a physiological consequence. So maybe for a season, you're going to think you're a crazy person. Start talking to Joe compassionately by using the name Joe instead of I, I, I. See what I'm saying? Oh, I do. Joe, you're going to get up and work all weekend. Next weekend, we're going to do this stuff. Deal? Deal. That's different than... Oh, once again, you failed. I'm the worst. Fair Um, enough? That's definitely fair enough. Here's a couple of other tips and tricks I'll give you. I want you to, um, instead of starting with identity, I mean, I'm sorry, instead of starting with values and make a value list, I want you to start with identity. I'm a guy, Joe is a guy who... I am a guy who, Joe's a guy who always tells the truth. Joe's a guy that works hard and also rests. Joe's a good steward of his body. And I want you to write those things down. And from those, I, that I didn't, Joe's a good husband. So what are the values that are going to make up a good husband? What are the things you're going to have to go do? But let's start with identity. And let's start with Joe is. And maybe you put Joe is on your mirror in your bathroom. And you put Joe is on your refrigerator. Joe doesn't beat himself like up. That. Joe's compassionate with himself. He asks, man, why did this weekend not work out like we wanted? And you, you may I- answer it because you're lazy. <laughs> like you really phoned it in this weekend. All right. Well, I'm going to give myself this one. And next time we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get it done. Or maybe like me, You bite off more than you can chew. You make a list of what you're going to do when your wife's out of town. I'm going to re-roof the house, change all the ceiling fans, redo the flooring. 
and my body knows this is impossible, dude. This is like six months worth of work, Deloney. So as James Clear says, when you're changing something, lower the friction. My wife's leaving town. I'm going to do one workout. I'm going to do one handyman thing. That's it. And then I'm going to rest. I'm going to build in rest. I'm a guy who takes care of his body. He's a good steward, both doing the hard stuff and doing the uh, rest stuff. And for some of us, rest um, is hard because busyness and activity is how we get our, um, how we get our esteem. And so resting and taking care of the, the machine, right? Repair and maintenance is uh, seen as downtime, as lazy time. It's not. It's essential. But I want you to practice being compassionate to my friend Joe, being curious when things come up, when hurdles come up. And what are some ways we can build in some very low friction changes? I'm going to do one thing when she's gone. I'm going to exercise this morning, and as Nick Barr says, I'm going to do one more. I'm just going to add one more, and that's it. That's it. I'm going to do one more. I can do that. I can do one more. I'm not going to go do a new workout program for 40 days. I'm just going to do one more than I was doing. I can do that because I'm a guy that takes care of himself. And I hope you hear my voice. One of these paths is so much more compassionate. It's laughter filled. It's also filled with really hard work. Dude, I went hard this morning, overdid it, Whew. but I needed it. It was good. And a few days ago, I did nothing because I needed it. And I almost never do nothing, but I did that day. I needed it. Let's stop with the judgment. Let's start being curious. 